Y'all seem to like my first Mac Utilities video, so let's do a round two. App number one, Vanilla. If you are an old school Mac user, or really just a Mac user at all, you have more than certainly heard about Bartender. It is an app that I have talked about in the past. It's been around for years and years and years. And what it allows you to do is organize all of this crap that gets cluttered up in your menu bar. You can choose to hide specific icons and then also organize them into subcategories. And, and Bartender gets really powerful with search uh, and a lot of other cool functions, but it's also expensive at $15 for a license. Well, Vanilla is a very similar app that can be downloaded and, and used for free with a couple of extra features being unlocked for $5. Um, now, Something that's kind of cool about Vanilla is similar to Bartender, it's super functional and just very sexy. You click this little arrow, all your icons go away, you click it again, and they all come back. Now, there's a preferences app that allows you to kind of uh, modify which icons get hidden or unhidden. So if, for example, you use the Wi-Fi icon a ton and you don't want that to hide when you press the little Vanilla uh, pop-down menu, then you just move it outside the parameter and you're good to go. Um, now that's basically the, the extent of the functionality in the free version, but if you buy the pro version, uh, you can have some menu items which are permanently fixed inside the menu bar, just permanently hidden or removed, which is really, really nice. And then another thing you can do, which is pretty handy, is to have the icons hide themselves after five seconds. So it, it's kind of annoying to click this again. So you can just, you know, click the icon, get what you need done, and then you leave and this automatically hides itself. Uh, one thing that the developer does that's really kind of cool is if you don't want or you can't pay $5, um, you can uh, refer a friend to Vanilla for four people and you automatically get a free license. And that's just if they download it, they don't even need to buy it. So that's pretty cool, uh, right on to the developer and that's Vanilla. Super simple, but really, really nice. App number two. This is another one that's been around forever. It used to be known as Houdini. I use this still with quite a bit of frequency, but when I was in university, I used this all the time. It was super helpful at helping me kind of focus and not get distracted by applications in the background. And that's really what it does. When you enable Hocus Focus, it hides all of your background applications in a set timeout function that you specify. So if I move over to System Preferences, uh, you'll see that Safari times out basically immediately and goes into the background. Now, it doesn't quit these applications, just hides them, uh, but it, it does it really, really smoothly. What's nice about it is that you can set how quickly these things hide on a per app basis. So rather than hiding uh, notes when the focus is lost, I can say, let's wait 45 seconds. And then when I open Safari and I open notes, uh, Safari hides immediately because it's one that is set to timeout quickly, but now Safari or Notes will stay open in the background for 45 seconds. What's cool about this application is that you can get really powerful with it. I used to do it on a per class basis. So I had one mode, for example, where most of my work was done in Word and Safari. I didn't want Safari to disappear in the background. And so I just had a profile mode called Safari Always On or, or whatever, and had it such that that browser or that app never timed out. It does take a little bit of time to get set up, and it does depend kind of on the, on the workflow. It's not really a one size fits all, but it is really, really awesome at helping minimize uh, kind of distractions by hiding applications that you're not actively using. That's Hocus Focus. It's been around forever, and there's a reason why. It just works. Application number three, PhotoRec, short for photo recovery. Look, there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of pieces of software online that attempt or, or claim to recover deleted or misplaced files on an SSD or hard drive. And, and many of them do work. They are legitimate pieces of software. But I have yet to find a piece of software that can recover something that PhotoRec can't. And, and PhotoRec is free, which is really great. Now, it isn't a macOS exclusive, so maybe it shouldn't be in this video, but I think it's such a powerful utility that you really do need to know about it. So let's demo it. I have inserted into my computer a SD card. And I'm gonna delete all of these photos of uh, the Galaxy Note 10, which I posted on Instagram. So I'm gonna delete all of these photos. They're going into the trash. And uh, we've got basically a, a bunch of photos left of me here. And then we're actually gonna go out and empty the trash. And so, yes, we're gonna permanently erase these items. We click empty trash. And just for safe measure, we're going to unplug the SD card and then replug it back in. Okay. So that is uh, bad, because if we click this SD card, you'll see that there is no way we are getting those photos back. They're, they're gone, right? 
Well, not necessarily. Let's go to our downloads folder where we have the test disk uh, folder, which contains photo rec inside. Now you're gonna need to right click and open this because it is a terminal command. It's a command line based application that runs using uh, sudo or, or uh, root access. And so if you don't right click and press open, it will not open correctly. So we are going to enter in my computer's admin password. Uh, don't worry, it's not gonna show uh, the dots. So it is, it is working, you just type it in and press return. And then it's going to show you your disks. Now I can immediately identify my SD card as disk three because it's a 16 gig SD card. But if you don't know and you need a little more detail, uh, what you can do is inside of disk utility, uh, it will actually show you the disk number it down in this little device section. So if you look at disk three, uh, S1, that gives us, uh, we know our 16 gig uh, SD card is disk three. So we are going to either use the mouse or the arrow keys to toggle to disk three. And uh, once we have done that, um, we press enter. And then it asks us what our partition type is, or if we have multi partitions, uh, we're just gonna use this FAT32 partition. That's where the file was at one point. So we press search. And then it's also going to ask us what our file system type is. Uh, you're almost always going to press other um, FAT, uh, NTFS, HFS, APFS, uh, they're all other. So you press other and then uh, it asks if you want to analyze the whole entire space or just the free partition or unallocated. Uh, we're gonna do whole just for good measure. And then you have to select where you're going to save the actual uh, f you know, recovered files. And so you're gonna wanna put it on a, a spot that doesn't get too cluttered. We're gonna put it on the desktop, which is uh, probably fine. And then press C once the destination is correct. It makes a little folder and then it gets to work right here. So it's already recovered one JPEG, two JPEGs, and uh, it is recovering some of the ones that were not deleted. So it's gonna find a lot more pictures than we actually need. Uh, but if we open up this thing, you'll see that, holy smokes, look at that. All of those photos, you know, the ones that we allegedly permanently deleted on our Mac, uh, those are still available and uh, they were always on our SD card. It is an excellent, excellent utility to recover basically any file. Uh, it works for more than just photos and it is free, which is bananas. I, I can't believe it. It's awesome. Photo rack, if you ever lose a file, it's your best bet. Application number four, amphetamine. Amphetamine is basically caffeine on crack. I'm not talking medically. There was a Mac app a number of years ago called Caffeine that came and, and was very, very popular. And all Caffeine did was acted as a menu bar item for a terminal command, which I actually showed in a previous video called Caffeinate. This is a, uh, oops. This is a command built into Mac OS, wherein if you type the word Caffeinate, your Mac will stay running indefinitely. The computer will not shut down and it overrides the system uh, kind of shutdown cycle. Uh, or, or sleep cycle. This is beneficial for a number of reasons. If you're downloading a file in a web browser or you're torrenting something or you're rendering something in a video application and you don't want the computer to try to go to sleep in the middle of that process, Caffeine prevents your computer from falling asleep. It actually even prevents it from entering the screensaver, which is pretty handy. The problem is, is that, well, typing Caffeinate isn't that handy of a utility, so people would download this Caffeine app. But there's actually a better app now on the market called Amphetamine. It's also free and it takes all of the good things about that terminal command and caffeine and amplifies them. Not only can you now toggle the command on and off like you've always been able to do, but you can set uh, specific time windows and you can even select uh, to a certain time of day or for a certain duration. Uh, you can even go further with this. You can go as long as an application is running. So many torrent applications, for example, when the file is done downloading, the app will quit. And then once the app quits, then amphetamine turns off. Uh, you can also do while a file is downloading. So it's even smart enough to identify uh, basically all major web browsers and some torrent clients, which is pretty cool. If you go into the preferences menu, you will be amazed at how many crazy things are available in this system. Uh, specific session settings, you can turn triggers on. So you can actually enable an uh, amphetamine or, or trigger amphetamine to turn on when you perform an action. So for example, when I open my torrent client, turn amphetamine on it, you know, specifically. And when something else happens, turn it off. Um, it, there's just a lot of really, really powerful power user things in here that most people are probably not gonna need. But amphetamine is super great if you need to ever prevent your Mac from falling asleep.
Application number five, Bowserosaurus. This app is made for people like me who have browser issues, or I guess just want to use different browsers for different tasks. So what happens when you click a URL with Bowserosaurus installed? Well, as long as it's not inside of the specific web browser, so you're outside of the web browser, it asks you which browser you would like to open that URL in. So I can either click with my mouse on the URL that I would like to open and, and what specific browser. So for YouTube, I always open it in Chrome because I want to watch videos in 4K rather than 1080p or 1440p, which is the limit of Safari. Uh, but let's say I want to do this a little more quickly. Well, you can just press this and then immediately hit the hotkey, which is set to your browser. So S is Safari, G is Google Chrome. They open nicely and quickly. It's really, really great, especially for people who do web dev and want to try a bunch of different browser compatibility. There's one other thing that's pretty neat about it. You can click a URL and then press the space bar. And what that does is that copies the URL to your clipboard. Uh, it's not super necessary, I suppose, but it is a nice little perk of this application. You can also, from within the browser source menu bar item, select your favorite browser if one exists. And that's about it. Really, really simple app, but it does its job well. Application number six, Keka, Kika? I don't know how to say it. It's, it's this thing. Basically every Mac, well, not basically every Mac, every Mac comes with archive utility installed inside of the core services folder. And it does, well, what it says. It zips and unzips files and other compression formats. But there are a lot of file formats like 7-zip files or tpz2 files which are not supported by archive utility and you need a third party uh, archive utility compression system and decompression system. Um, oh, by the way, this is a hilarious fun fact for you. So the DVD player, not only did it get a new icon in the latest version of macOS uh, inside of macOS Mojave, but they actually rewrote most of the app from the ground up. Apparently people still need it. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> there's trivia for the day. Uh, Kika basically uh, kind of takes over uh, archive utility and, and, and does most of the compression and decompression instead. Now, there are a lot of apps out there that do this. Stuff It Expander is one of the most famous and popular. Uh, one that's become really, really popular in recent years is uh, the Unarchiver for the Mac. But I think that Kika does the nicest job. It's the newest. And what I like about it is that it's fast and it's easy to use. You just it, it works like archive utility. You double click it and it expands and extracts into the folder that you are inside of. But it also allows you to kind of enter the application and make a bunch of different weird compression formats that you want. It works really, really nicely. It's just super clean and, and feels like a native app, a Mac app where I feel like the unarchiver kind of feels a little, uh, I don't know, platform agnostic. And so, uh, yeah, I just, I think it's better. They're, they're both great, but Kika is the way to go. And on to number seven, our last application, Backtrack. Backtrack is one of those apps that's free and it, it makes sense that it's free because it's such a simple utility, but the more that you use it and the more that you come to rely on it, you can't believe that it, it is free because it's so useful. In short, what it does is it records uh, 60 minutes of audio and stores 60 minutes of audio locally on your Mac, on your local storage, on your Mac. So it, none of this is uploaded to the cloud, but it's always recording in the background and saves that last 60 minutes of audio to your machine. This is super handy when you're working in an office environment or if you're in a lecture in a university and you need to just rewind a couple minutes because you missed something or, or you want to remember what you said. What's cool is that the way the app works is, is super clever. You press the icon uh, to change the microphone and, and settings, but if you actually want to backtrack, you just take the icon and you drag it. And the further you drag it away from the origin, the more it backtracks. And again, you can backtrack up to 60 minutes. So you can go back to 18 seconds and the application automatically saves the last fraction of, uh, of you know, that time segment directly to the area that you've selected. You can save it as an MP3 and it just, it works and it keeps recording 60 minutes in the background at all times. You can save one second or 60 minutes. And then once you pass that 60 minute buffer, it just scratches and re-records. Really, really handy, really awesome. If you are a student or if you are just in an office environment and you forget stuff, Backtrack, it's a really great free utility. Well, folks, that's all from me. I hope you found an app or two or seven that you hadn't heard of before. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, well, that other button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos like these and enable that bell for notifications. But most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.